What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to take you truly behind the scenes of my YouTube setup. Now, over on my Instagram, if you follow me, usually I share a lot of the behind the scenes of what's happening in my life. And on one day, on Amazon Prime Day actually, I told you guys that I bought a bunch of equipment to do a massive upgrade for my YouTube channel because I finally hit 100,000 subscribers. So not only was this a gift to me, but it's also a gift to you guys because I obviously want to keep getting better when it comes to creating videos. Now, unfortunately, there was no Amazon Prime deals on any of these things that I have, but the least that I can do is at least give you a walkthrough of what's truly happening behind the scenes. So, if you're interested in learning about my YouTube setup, specifically all the way down to the type of equipment that I'm using and seeing how I've set everything up within my bedroom, then make sure you keep on watching. I'm gonna put a disclaimer right now that I am not a tech guru or a tech expert. And in this clip, I'm gonna show you really proves it. So right now you are watching this video from my new camera, which is the Sony A6400. No. Sony A64,000, A6400. <laughs> um. Now, obviously, I really struggled with pronouncing the camera name alone. So if you are someone that's looking for serious tech advice, make sure you check out my friends at Think Media. I actually referenced this video right here, and I followed it to a T in a sense of figuring out what exact equipment to buy. And I literally copied exactly what that video recommended. So make sure you check out their video if you are looking for the techier side of things. However, if you're an average Joe like me, you don't know much about tech and you want an opinion from someone who is not techie at all, then you're in the right place. So with that disclaimer aside, I'm gonna explain to you the camera that I'm using right now. Now the camera that I'm using right now is called the Sony A6400 and I'm not gonna lie, it really hurt me to buy this camera. And the big reason for this is because it's kind of expensive, it was really over my budget. But the reason why I ended up investing in this camera is because a lot of pro YouTubers were saying that this was the legit Thing. Not only this, what really swayed me over were two factors specifically. One was the autofocus. Apparently the autofocus on this is superb and I'm gonna have to agree. Wherever I go, the focus stays on my face and even if it doesn't, it actually focuses really fast. Let me give you an example. As you can see, the focus on this is really awesome and I love, love, love this. The reason why is because with my old Canon camera, which was the T5i, which actually I talked a lot about in this video right here where I share all of my old equipment, the problem is, is that sometimes it wouldn't focus on my face and therefore it made my filming super inefficient because I would always have to get up out of my seat to make sure that I was actually in focus because I didn't want to risk filming an entire video out of focus. Now that I have this camera, I am guaranteed that wherever I go, I am always gonna be in focus. And therefore, I don't have to get up out of my seat and check every time. And it's like bam, 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 bam. All the footage is done because I'm not having any hesitations about my focus. Not only this, the second reason why I decided to invest in this camera is because of superb 4K quality. Now, I was very torn between buying this camera and the Canon M50. And the reason why is because the Canon M50 is a lot cheaper and is also highly raved about in the YouTube community. Based on my research, a lot of people recommend the Canon M50 as the best camera for YouTubers. However, this camera, the Sony a6400, is now pretty much the new kid on the block. And now a lot of YouTubers are saying that this camera is far more superb, specifically the 4K function. Now, obviously, does everyone need 4K videos? No, but I'm gonna tell you exactly why I've decided to film in 4K. It's not because I think that my audience is watching videos in 4K, but because of two reasons. First, I found out that YouTube actually ranks videos that have 4K a lot higher in the algorithm. Not only this, what swayed me over of buying this camera is thanks to Sean over at Think Media. And what he said was when you buy this camera, you're basically future-proofing yourself. Meaning that yes, nowadays a lot of people film in 1080p, however, who's to say that next year or the following year, maybe the next big thing is watching videos in 4K. And that's kind of where the trend is heading. So I know that by investing this money in this camera, I know that this camera is actually going to take me farther and further in the future. Now, the next big upgrade that I did was my audio. And audio is actually not the first thing that I've ever upgraded. Through the evolution of my channel, you'll notice in the beginning, I was using the built-in microphone on my camera. And this was the result. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Now, in today's video, you are actually
actually in for a treat because I'm gonna share with you my tips, tricks, secrets, and hacks on how exactly I find fresh new content ideas for social media. Now, as you can hear, it's super echoey. And also, I got a lot of complaints from my own subscribers. That's when the next phase of my upgrade started to happen. And that's when I opted for a lapel mic. This is a microphone that you actually attach to your shirt. And the reason why I like this is because if my cat's running around or if there's a siren outside, as long as the microphone is near my face, it's gonna always pick up me, my voice. Now, the issue though, is that it really limited the type of clothes that I could wear and also the type of necklaces that I could wear as well. And if you're familiar with my channel, we all know that necklace that kept clinking into my microphone and ruining my audio. And if you're new to my channel, let me show you an example. Of course, the internet is a very vast space. Nowadays, you can get any information online. That's why, as you can see, in order to actually free myself up, be able to move freely in a video, not care if my hair's flinging into my chest, I upgrade to another microphone and specifically I got a shotgun mic now this shotgun mic isn't something that I'm putting necessarily on my camera but I'm putting it on a boom stand and what the boom stand looks like is this as you can see right beside me a microphone is literally dangling right in front of me so that my audio is superb in my videos not only this this microphone is from Rode it's called the Rode video mic pro plus and it's one of the best microphones on the market for youtubers and that's why I decided to buy it now if you're interested in the price of it with the boom stand this is how much it costs currently and if you're also interested in just getting the shotgun mic alone which is honestly fine if you're doing sit down videos like me then you could check out the price here as well now obviously the reason why I chose the boom stand is just because I wanted to make sure that it was the closest that it could be to my face because if it's on my camera I can't necessarily be as close as I would like so that's why I decided to put the boom stand but of course it's not necessary however if you are having someone in your video and you're doing an interview let's say it's really helpful to have the microphone dangling from the top so that it's catching both people now obviously if your videos don't include people like mine then you're probably Probably fine. Now, moving on to the next massive upgrade that I did, and that is lighting. Now, you obviously notice in my videos, the aesthetic is a lot more different, and there's a reason for this. I was sick of only filming during the day. It was very limiting for me, and even though I personally prefer filming with daylight, I actually needed to make a choice and finally invest in lighting so that my lighting wouldn't constantly change. For example, if you look at some of my videos, you'll notice that through the shots, the lighting kept changing, and that's the problem problem when you're filming with daylight. I always felt like I was racing against time in order to get consistent lighting. Now, if you don't believe me, let me show you a clip. Not only was the lighting inconsistent because I didn't have artificial lighting, I also found it to be very debilitating, especially as a business owner with multiple meetings that I have to go to during the day, having time to film wasn't necessarily a lot. That's why by having artificial lights, now I can actually film in my room even if it's 9 p.m., 7 p.m., and right now it's 9 p.m. and I'm still filming. That means that I'm actually able to film a lot more videos in one day alone. Speaking of which, today I hammered out five videos in a row which is insane thanks to my lighting and thanks to the amazingness of this new setup versus before I could only film two videos per sitting because the daylight lighting would disappear and all of that that's why I highly recommend actually investing in lighting if you want to actually film more videos in a short period of time now, at this point in the video, you might be thinking to yourself, okay, Vanessa, show us what lights you're using. So for me, I'm using the Fovitech LED lights. Now, obviously, this is something that Sean over at Think Media recommended, like I said earlier on in this video. So make sure you check out his video to actually know list by list all the equipment that I'm using because I literally followed it to a T. But basically, I got these two lights and right now they're right in front of me side by side or on the two sides of me. Now, obviously, I did something a little bit different and I added a softbox cover in order to actually diffuse the light a little bit more as per the recommendation of my video editor. I'm not really sure if it makes a huge difference because I've actually haven't tried filming without it because all this equipment is still pretty fresh, but I do really like this lighting and for the price, I'm really impressed. Not only this, as you can see, I can actually control the brightness and the tint 
of this lighting. I can make it more yellow, I can make it more cool, and also I can change the brightness as I go. And this is something that I really appreciated and why I decided to invest in this lighting specifically. Now, as you can see so far in this video, I've really showed you the three major game changers in terms of my equipment update. However, there's more than just these three items. The next item that I want to introduce to you is the lens. Right now, the lens that I'm using is the Sigma 16mm 1.4 f. Now, don't ask me what all that means because I don't actually know. However, I knew that I wanted to make sure I had the blurry background that a lot of YouTubers have. And through my research, this lens was actually going to get me there. Now, truth be told, when I was first making my purchase, I actually had ordered the wrong lens. I ordered the 30mm thinking that it was going to be perfect for my needs. However, the problem is, is that when I ordered the 30mm instead of the 16mm lens, it was actually really close up to my face. Meaning that my camera actually had to be super far away from me. Now with the 16 millimeter, my camera is much closer to me than before, which actually makes me a lot more confident in filming videos. Not only this, because it's the 16 millimeter, you can actually see a lot more in the background than you did before, which is actually what I prefer in a camera. So it really depends what your needs are. However, I'm going to tell you right now, so you don't make the mistake that I do, especially as someone who doesn't know much techie stuff, the 30 millimeter was definitely way too close. And that's why you can see in this footage that it was really, really close to my face because I was experimenting with the different angles and now I'm far more happier with the 16 millimeter. Now, when it actually comes to getting the blurry background, unfortunately, the way that my room is set up, I'm still really close to the background, which is why my blurriness, AKA bokeh, isn't enough. But as I move closer to the camera, you'll see the blurriness. As you can see, as I'm coming closer to the camera, the bokeh in the background becomes a lot stronger. Now, hopefully as I move into another studio, the bokeh will be a lot more stronger and to the liking that I want. But for now, this will do. Now, moving on to some upgrades that I didn't really anticipate that I would need to make. The first is a new remote. Now, again, if you actually look at this video right here where I talk about my old equipment, I was using a Canon camera and therefore I had a Canon remote. Obviously, remotes are only compatible with certain cameras and the remote that I used to have wasn't really compatible with the Sony anymore. That's why I now have this remote that is fully compatible with the camera that I'm using so that I can hit record and stop recording whenever I want so that I don't have to get up on my seat and manually do it myself. Now, another thing that I didn't expect that I would need to fork over money for is a better and stronger SD card. Now that I'm actually filming in 4K, it's taking up a lot more space. Therefore, I actually had to buy a even more expensive SD card at 128 gigabytes, where I used to use only 64. So that was also another purchase that I didn't expect. Another thing that I didn't expect was upgrading my internet because of the 4K. Now, obviously for me, I work with a video editor, but even if I didn't, the speed in which the 4K videos were uploading to my drive and to everything else took forever. And therefore I actually had to upgrade my internet as well so that the videos could actually transfer a lot faster. So it's extremely true that when you actually buy something that's more luxurious or more expensive, expect to also pay a lot more for the maintenance. So that's something that I definitely didn't expect when I was making this upgrade. Now, hopefully in this video, even though I'm not a techie, you guys kind of learned a lot more about my setup. I'm so far pretty happy with all of this. Now, obviously it took me a while to actually get used to it. So you're going to see a lot of trial and error when it comes to my YouTube videos. But so far, I have to say that I'm really pleased with the result. Now, if you want more videos, maybe not about tech, but other things like mindset, marketing, and entrepreneurship, and coaching, make sure you check out these two videos right here. As always, guys, thanks for your patience on watching this video about tech from a non-techie, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys!